Restore Thrive, we're back. We hope you guys are ready tonight. We're gonna to talk about everybody's most favorite thing in the gym, warm up. And the reason we're gonna talk about warm up is because you guys are leaving performance on the table when you don't warm up well. So we're gonna run you through our simple warm up that we do with all of our clients to get them ready to perform at their highest level. This is particularly important if you're one of those folks in the functional fitness or CrossFit community when you're going hard, when you've got a heavy Metcon, when you're in the open and you're competing and trying to put up a good time, you need to have your engine hot and running and ready to go. You cannot kind of just drag yourself through the warm up and then hope to perform at that highest level. So we're gonna keep this really simple here with this just basic triangle. The way we're gonna attack this is from the bottom up. Your foundation is to get hot first. And the way that we do this is mainly with the bike or the rower, the Air 9, the Assault Bike, and your Concept 2 rower. The reason for that is we like that total body movement. It warms you up head to toe. And we've seen that the research is plentiful showing us that if we start to breathe heavy, if we start to break a set, a sweat, what we're doing is we're turning on your nervous system and we're helping it communicate better with your body. That makes you more efficient in whatever you're about to do. Once we do that, what we want to get into is what we call dynamic warm-up. We'll just go DW there. Dynamic warm-up means it's a movement-based warm-up. This is not when we sit and hold stretches. This isn't the time to bring out the foam roll or the lacrosse ball. We need to be moving. We need to be active. Our patterns should look like the type of movements that we're going to do in our workout. So if we're squatting, we're going to get into a squat shape. Lunges are like a half squat shape just like this. So this lunge position is a great example of how we can warm you up for the squat. The other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're warming up three-dimensionally. Even though we may be doing something that's just straight ahead like a squat or like a press, a lot of times we see that the limitation in your output is your ability to control your body in this frontal plane and in this rotary or transverse plane. So we should have a little bit of work that moves us side to side, a little bit of rotary work or even anti-rotation work. We've talked before about anti-rotation press. Put a band around the rack or a pole, press out in front with you standing perpendicular to the line of pole. That's going to hit your obliques, that's going to hit your deep abdominal stabilizers. Those are the muscles that help produce better power through your lower body and through your upper body. The last thing we want to do after we get hot and after we go through dynamic warm-up is we want to attack the limiting factors here. So if you know you have stiff ankles, if you know you have stiff hips, we want you to spend 30 to 60 seconds working on those limiting factors. If we're going to do upper body pressing and we know that we don't have a good end range position in our press, we don't have good shoulder internal rotation, warm that up with an active movement, a banded movement, get a band around your shoulder, your hip, your ankle, move in and out of that position open up that range that you need before you start training. In terms of time commitment here, that warm-up is going to be anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. We say the more intense the effort is, generally the shorter it's going to be and the longer your warm-up should be. So if you have a heavy, intense effort, it's 10 minutes just trying to get hot on the bike or on the rower. Dynamic warm-up, we say probably about 5 minutes. Limiting factors, we want to pick one or two, so that's one or two limiting factors, and if we're spending a minute or so on each tops, we're going to be doing four to five minutes there. So we've got ten minutes here, five to ten minutes here. Make sure you get to the gym early. If you know you've got a heavy workout coming in, get that warm-up in. That's going to increase your performance, decrease your injury risk, and you're going to be feeling better on the other side of that workout as well. Give these things a try, guys. Let us know what you think. Leave a comment down below. We'll talk to you again soon.